Greetings. My name is Zach Bedell, and I'm the author of Bookshelf for the iPhone and iPod Touch. In this video, I'll show you some of the features of Bookshelf, how to use the application, and perhaps most importantly, how to load your own books onto the, your device so you can read them. I want to apologize in advance uh, for any audio indiscretions you may hear this evening. Uh, we have some thunder and lightning going on. I have a pair of kittens bounding about the house, so please bear with me on the sound. I'll be demonstrating Bookshelf version 1.1 in the iPhone simulator. Different versions of Bookshelf may look slightly different, but most of the important features should look pretty much the same. I'm using the simulator just for ease of camera work. It should look identical on your iPhone or iPod Touch. The only real difference is you'll see a mouse cursor tonight instead of my fingers. I'll probably also only mention the iPhone from here on. Bookshelf works equally well on the iPod Touch. It's just easier to say simply iPhone. So assuming you've downloaded Bookshelf from the App Store successfully, you should see something like this. Tap the icon, of course, and Bookshelf will launch. Freshly installed, you'll see a welcome document. There's a few features of this screen that I'll point out. You can see over on the left-hand side of the file name is a little blue dot, and that dot simply indicates that the file has not been opened yet. It's unread. If this were a folder of documents, you'd see a little folder icon. And of course, we have the edit button in the corner here, and you get the usual delete behavior that you're used to for most iPhone applications. It's also possible to simply do a swipe operation across the row and get a delete confirmation button that way. If you delete files, of course, you delete simply the file. If you delete folders, it's recursive, and all of the files and folders underneath the row that you've chosen will all be deleted in one go. So we'll tap on a row, we'll open the document, and you see the very exciting welcome document that's shipped as part of Bookshelf. Um, most of the features that you would expect in an iPhone application will work here. You can use your fingers to drag and scroll around. You can also tap on the bottom or the top quarter of the screen in order to scroll up and down by a full page. This file isn't really long enough to show that, but we'll look at a longer file later on. You can also tap in the middle of the screen to toggle the visibility of the toolbars. If you'd like to read with the full screen, you can get rid of them, and they automatically disappear whenever you scroll. When you need them back, just tap in the middle and they reappear. Across the top of the screen, we have a back button, as you might expect. We also have two navigation buttons that I'll discuss in a little while that move between pieces of a document. We have a preferences toolbar or toolbar button down on the bottom. The lock rotate function, which I'll show you in a bit. Uh, delete trash can, of course. Bookmarks. And then over on the right, we have auto scroll preferences that lets you move around a file without actually having to tap or drag or anything to scroll. So I guess for starters, I'll show you preferences. Uh, you have the option here to reverse the scrolling direction if you per prefer to tap on the top to go down a page. Depending on how you hold your phone, that's easier for some people. We also just have a reminder that this is the book you're looking at. We have font preferences. You can set both the size and the font face that you want. We have text encoding. This is usually only useful on Palm OS type documents. Uh, it allows you to control the type of character encoding that's used to decode the file. This is most often an issue with uh, non-English texts in uh, Russian especially, uh, French, any, any language you might speak that has accented characters or other non-Roman characters. And we have color themes where you can pick various pre-named themes that you might like to look in your file if uh, the usual black on white doesn't do it for you. And then down at the very bottom we have a mark on red book button and what this will simply do is delete any stored data for this file, bookmarks, location, color settings, everything, um, just to let you start fresh. So we hit the done button and we go back and you can see the font's quite a bit larger. It's a different font face. We have some different colors and now because the text is bigger I can scroll up and down by a full page. You can see how that works. Next up I'll show you the rotate function. Now this will look a little weird the way that I have the screen capture set up. But if you rotate your phone or device, you'll see nothing happens when this lock icon is set. If you want to rotate the view, tap that icon and you'll see the no symbol goes away and you just have a rotate. Now if you rotate your device, the text will spin around as you'd expect it to. 
I personally find, especially with Safari, if you're reading, if you might be laying down or lounging or something, the orientation of your device versus gravity is not always the orientation of your eyes, uh, and the accelerometer will flip things around kind of unpleasantly. So this just gives you an opportunity to lock in a position. We have a delete icon next, and of course you can confirm that. We won't delete it just yet. We have bookmarks here, and in this screen you can type a new bookmark. And hit the done button. And what we've just done, if I were to scroll back to the beginning of the document, go into bookmarks and pick that mark, you'll see it scrolls back to where we were. You can have as many documents in a book as you want, um, and they get automatically cleaned up when you delete a document. And then last on the toolbar at the bottom, we have auto scroll. Some people prefer not to tap and just to let the device scroll the book on its own. And if you hit the little play button there, you'll see it changes to a pause and the file starts scrolling on its own. You can tap to get rid of the toolbars, although if you grab the document and scroll it, it'll stop scrolling at that point. You'll have to restart it. And then the little plus minus buttons here are to control the speed that you want it to scroll at. You can go slower or faster as you like. And of course when it gets to the end, it'll stop on its own. If this were a larger document, you might see a little red arrow icon in the bottom right here. I hope to show one of those to you in a bit. That indicates that there's more of the document to go, and you can tap to get there. For now, though, I think we're done with this document. We'll clean it up. There's not terribly much to see. So after we delete it, we go back to the file listing, and you can see there's no more documents. Now here on the file listing, we also have settings. These settings apply to all documents that haven't already received their own specific settings. So that is to say, if you change, for instance, to a little bit larger font and maybe a different font face here, now all of the documents that we haven't picked something else will automatically get these settings. The settings that I showed you before when you had a document open, those only apply to the particular document that you're looking at um, and won't flow back to other documents in your list. We'll close the settings. You have the rotate lock here again, same thing. Um, you also have bookmarks. If I hadn't deleted the, that other file, you would see an entry here for the file and any bookmarks it might have, and you'd also see entries for all of the other files in this folder here that might have bookmarks. You can jump into them by clicking them there 